Hey everyone, coming at you with video number four from the Aero Ballistic Study. Today we got an awesome topic, uh, deep diving into another case study. We're looking at helical. We're looking at different degrees of helical and how the how what results we saw from the test. So we're looking at zero degrees, so basically straight, moderate helical, which is about two degrees, and a max helical, which is about four degrees. Uh, during the during the the study, we looked at all of these and we quantified drag and lift recovery and noise. So stay tuned. Hey guys and gals, we're going into deep dive into helical today. So similar to what we did, similar to what we did on the last case study, the three versus four fletch, we're going to be doing the same thing here. So we've prepared a case study over on the Precision Cut Archery website um, with some plots and figures. I really encourage you to go check out uh, the the case study over on the Precision Cut Archery website. But this YouTube video is basically going to give. I'm going to do a walk down or an overview of the case study. So um, similar to what we did before, I'm going to mostly talk about this plot. Uh, you've seen this, if you've watched any of my other YouTube videos, you've seen versions of this plot. And if you're, if you're looking at this for the first time, I really encourage you to go watch the other videos so you're not lost. So I'll give a brief overview for anybody new. On this plot, we're looking on the left on the left axis or that y axis. We're looking at aerodynamic drag. This is the drag coefficient that we computed for every arrow combination during the the ballistic study. On the on the x axis or the lower axis, we're looking at broadhead displacement. So for broadhead displacement, we physically took the bow out of tune and we shot every uh, vein combination with the iron wheel wide. With, a, with the bow out of tune and torqued in the shooting machine. So we've introduced an angular deviation. And, and this, on the y-axis, we're looking at how the broadhead or how, the, how well the arrow was able to, or the veins were able to correct the broadhead flight. So here, less broadhead displacement is better. Less drift um, it is better. So less drag is better and less lift is better. So that means that this origin is kind of like our optimum spot. So, and just like before, we've got the icons in the plot colored for noise intensity, yellow being quieter and purple being louder. So during the, during the testing, the aeroballistic study, we looked at three vein profiles uh, for this, this vein for the helical study. The AAE Max Stealth, the Boning Blazer, and the Q2I Fusion X2 2.5. For each of these veins, we fletched them three fletch, and with zero degrees offset, a Bitsenberger right helical clamp with two degrees of offset, and the uh, to for the Max helical, we used the Arizona East Fletcher, which is about four degrees, uh, four to five degrees of helical. We measured it about four degrees. Um, so here in this plot, the circles are the max stealth, the squares are the boning blazer, and the triangles are the Q2I fusion. You will notice that uh, there are only two circle icons for the AAE max stealth. Uh, unfortunately, we did this right at the end of our testing on day two. Um, and we we forgot it just in the uh, just in the heat of the moment trying to get things wrapped up we for actually forgot to do the max stealth testing with zero degrees helical or zero degrees offset so the straight fletch so that's why the that's the that's what's missing off of this um, so you're not seeing the results from the zero degree offset for the max stealth so. First and foremost, I'm going to point out that some amount of helical or offset 
is crucial for for good stabilization. We clearly saw, um, so you can see from the boning blazer and the Q2I fusion that we had four or five inches more of drift on both of these vein setups when they were just straight fletched. Um, that's, that's, that's a very significant number well outside of our confidence intervals. So clearly some degree of helical is a good thing for stabilizing the arrow. Um, there is no question there. Now looking at two degrees of helical versus four degrees of helical. Similar to the three versus four fletch, uh, we're kind of seeing similar results where two degrees of helical and four degrees of helical are almost a vertical translation, meaning that it's really just impacting the drag coefficient without actually um, affecting the lift recovery or the broadhead displacement. Almost, almost like the lift recovery is plateauing and the drag is increasing. So remember that drag and lift recovery are different things. Drag is a bad thing that opposes the forward motion of the arrow, and lift recovery is a force perpendicular to the flight path of the arrow that corrects the arrow. So it is possible for a vein to increase drag without really increasing lift, and we've seen this time and time again in this study. So you can see the boning blazer, two degrees helical. Um, it actually had about a four, four from the two degrees helical to the four degrees of helical had about a 4% increase in drag with basically no meaningful increase in, or no meaningful decrease in broadhead displacement. The same thing we saw with the AAE Max Stealth. Two degrees of helical versus four degrees actually had an increase of about six percent in drag without any meaningful change in the broadhead displacement. Now, looking at the Q2I Fusion, this one's an interesting because the Q2I Fusion, two degrees of helical versus four degrees of helical, we actually saw that the four degrees of helical actually drifted more. So it was worse in lift recovery because it the four degrees of helical allowed that fixed blade broadhead to drift more or had more broadhead displacement. Um, it's about two inches. Um, for our lift recovery, uh, we had about, our confidence intervals are about plus or minus one and a half to two inches. So the two inch difference that we're seeing here is kind of on the ragged edge of our, um, kind of our, our plus or minus of, uh, on, our, on our confidence interval. But I do kind of feel that these results are meaningful. And the reason why I say that is beyond this plot, there was, there, were, there was some other observations that we had during the study. So when we were doing the drag testing, we were shooting every vein setup um, six, with six arrows. We'd fletched up six arrows with every vein setup. And we were shooting in groups. We were shooting, we were shooting these six arrows in groups. Now, for the most part, most of the arrows, like our, our, our standard arrow was, um, we were getting, we were looking at like a two, two inch group. Um, what was interesting when we, the first time that we came up with one of these, cause we randomized all of the, the, the order of our, of our shooting. The first time we came up with one of these to shoot one of these max helical arrows, that group size with fill tips actually doubled it, it it opened up to like four or five inches and i remember watching things through the spotting scope thinking I, and i and i physically said this i said hold up guys we got to check something something's wrong the bow the shoot the bow must be out of tune we got to check that group size opened up something's wrong and we checked the tune of the bow we checked to make sure everything was good and and there we we identified zero problems so we kind of just chalked it up as not sure what's going on well, a couple more arrows, you know, we went back to shooting a different vein profile with maybe the, the two degrees of helical and the group size sunk right back in. Well, up comes another, eventually up comes another max helical group where we're doing the, where, where we're doing the, the, the vein, the, the, the drag testing. And sure enough, the group opens up again. Anyway, so basically what this, what the conclusion that we drew, we drew during the study 
was that that clearly that uh, overspinning the arrow can be detrimental. Clearly, it causes an increase in drag, as is very quantifi- quantifiable from these results. Um, but to some degree, the the degree of randomness it it, it just seemed that that the group sizes were more random with these max helical arrows. As, uh, as we saw this, like I said, shooting the field tips, and you're kind of seeing that here with the Q2i Fusion X2 as well, that the max helical group actually got worse. Um, it almost seems like when with the back of that arrow or with the arrow spinning as much as it is, it almost seems like there's some movement and when we do another round of this testing next year, because Aero Ballistics Part 2 is going to be coming next year, I want to do a better job with the Phantom camera of maybe looking at these max helical arrows and, and seeing if there is physically more movement going on, which would kind of help us zone in on, on what's causing this randomness. Right now, we're kind of just proposing that the back of that arrow is moving around quite a bit with the the over spinning of the arrow. And, and those are kind of our thoughts right now. So really that's, that's kind of the, the takeaway here. Some amount of helical is a good thing. Um, certainly that is, there is no doubting from these results that that, that two degrees of helical with the measurements that we took of zero, two and four degrees of helical that, that two degrees of helical seems to be a sweet spot. Clearly, there, those are fairly big gaps, so maybe that isn't completely optimized. But it does appear that um, over overspinning the arrow can doesn't really add any benefit for lift recovery. It causes more drag, and like I said, can cause more randomness in your in your arrows. So that's basically the takeaway from, from, from the study. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video uh, where we discuss the case study on helical. Uh, as always, if you like the video, please like it. So please subscribe to the channel, it really helps out. And hit that bell for so you're notified when we release new videos. Speaking of new videos, this next video we're gonna be talking about the arrow build process itself. Uh, Black Ovis Aero ID actually built all 300 shafts that we used in this study. I recently did a tour of their facility and I kind of want to talk about their aero building process, how, how I'm impressed with it, and if you're kind of new to building arrows, how it gives you an option to have a premium aero built for you. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.